Dr. Zelenka, I believe that you are the Avram Avinu of our times because you searched, you discovered, you continue to search and invent. As a scientist, uh, as a doctor who was searching and still searching for spirituality, what are your comments about the father of our nation, Abraham Avinu? Um, thank you, Rabbi, and good night, Shabbos. And uh, I'll let other people <laughs> make those assessments. It's uh, uncomfortable for me to to even think about what I am or what I am not. So, but that's not as important as the mission. And the mission right now is to save as many people as possible um, because we have a solution to this terrible uh, plague of idolatry and falsehood, which uh, Avram Avino ha actually had to deal with. He at that time lived in a place where no one believed in the unity of God. And he was the only one that through really intellectual pursuit and analysis concluded that there must be the cause of all causes, the primal cause. And, um, and that led him to um, seek uh, the truth and let them eventually to let go of his intellect and, and connect uh, in a super rational way with the infinite God, which is really the, the, the realm of faith, pure faith. So one of the absolute requirements of developing pure faith and I say the word pure because faith needs to be pure. See, Rabbi, I don't believe you have a heart. I'm sorry. I don't have to believe it because I held hearts in my hand. I, I know you have a heart. See, that's a big difference between believing and knowing. If you believe in things that you should know, that's stupid. That's not faith. That's lack of effort. But if you know everything that you're supposed to know, and then you realize the limitations of where... Uh, where knowledge could take you. you know, the ultimate purpose of, of knowledge is to know what you don't know. You, you can't know everything. Even uh, in quantum mechanics, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle established that very well, that you can't know the momentum of the position of electron simultaneously. That created a ceiling, a human limit to knowledge, and beyond which faith lives. Faith begins when knowledge ends. That's what Avram Avinu did. He used his scientific head, his irrational head, understood that there is, there must be a cause that causes things to happen, a primal cause, a primordial cause, a cause upon which no one else has caused him to be, but his existence is from his existence. And that's where faith begins. Now, getting back to the issue at hand, why did I call this a plague of idol worship? Because people are not dying from the virus. People are dying from the worship of experts, from the worship of human uh, power or the worship of power. People are dying, not because of the truth, which is that there is a cure, that there is a solution, there is an effective treatment for COVID-19. You give the medications early in the right time frame, everyone gets better. That's the truth. And they're all safe. No, but people are dying because of the politics. And uh, I mentioned earlier, politics is a blood sport. I didn't realize how literally that needs to be understood because, because of the politics, the streets of the world are flowing in the blood of innocent people. So how does this all happen? How do we get rid of the idol worship that's within each of us and discover the truth and live with pure faith and act in moral and ethical ways. So the answer is given by God to Avram. He says, Lechacha, go to yourself. My apologies. Is that me? I can't tell. Sorry. So, um, Go to yourself. That's an important concept. Because what does it mean? Where am I if I'm not with myself? God said to him, go to yourself. <laughs> there, there is you and then there's you. There's the you that you grow up with, where you're, let's say, let's, I assume we're talking to Russian immigrant uh, Jews, right? Oh, to everyone? Yeah, of course. Um, 
so most of us grow up in a um, materialistic way. We value education. We, we value wealth, financial wealth, power, reputation, prestige, and so on. And that's what we pursue. Uh, all these external um, validation of our worth. So everything that most people for the, their entire lives pursue externality, uh, superficiality, physicality. But there is a completely different dimension to existence that unless you're trained to and sensitized to it from a young age, it's difficult to discover. And that's the inner world. That's the inner spiritual truth and reality. It's, it's your soul. It's your soul's connection with God. Your soul needs love. It needs nurturing, it needs care. And it's, it's priceless and it's very sensitive and delicate. And unless you water it and you take care of it nicely, it gets alienated from a person and disoriented and a person may not even realize he has a soul. And that's why there is a commitment, go to yourself, actually right. search for yourself in a fight and a struggle to discover yourself. And yourself is the following, because in the interest of time, I'm running out, but um, in the, yourself is the fact that you are rooted in the essence of God, that your soul is the soul of man is the candle of God, or the candle of God is the soul of man. And um, it's a mamamish. It's a part of the living God. It's a spark of the divine. It's a chip off the old block. And if a person were to just meditate a little bit, concentrate, step away from the physicality, step away the, from the superficiality, go to yourself, the true you, which is always bound with the essence of the creator. And there you will discover an infinite reservoir of absolute purity and energy and hope and inspiration. Listen, I, listen I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm suffering a lot. I have really bad cancer. I have a lot of side effects. I have heart failure. How does someone like me continue, especially fighting the entire world? I go to myself. I, I look deep into me, into the reservoir of my soul and derive from there the inspiration and the energy and the vitality to continue to fight for a better world. I want to thank you so much. Just we received the question as we speak. Um, a pregnant woman, can she take your uh, yes. regiment? Absolutely. Uh, yes. She's scared because the doctors, the treating her never heard of it or, or scared to prescribe it. N no harm to, for her to take either one, right? We give it to pregnant it's, women, we give it to children, we give it to nursing mothers. No problem. Thank you so much. So you, uh, in a way, revealed the secret of resilience and courage, which is um, being in touch with your true self. And for that, you need to discover it first. And you need to believe you have it. Am I right? I want to okay. thank you so much. Wishing you, first of all, a full Schleimer. And second, many, many simchas to you and your family. And third, victories. And most importantly now, good Shabbos. All good the best. Thank you.